euro we needed during the darkest days of the pandemic, raising more than £39 million for the NHS by walking 100 laps of his garden. Well, the great captain Sir Tom Moore's funeral will take place on Saturday following his death earlier this month at the age of 100. His family are asking people to support the NHS by staying at home to remember a man who represented the very best of this country. And 850,000 people have signed the petition for you to be given a knighthood. Don't hold your breath. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I am going to hold my yes, breath, because, because that's going to happen. I've never ever had such a time in all my life as to be there speaking to the Queen, who's such a delightful person. If you've got to give me a bodyguard, can you send a very nice, attractive one, please? <laughs> What lessons, Tom, have you learned about life in your hundred years? I've always said tomorrow is a good day. All my life I've been an optimistic person to think that if you had a bad day or two, things will certainly get better. And in my life, they always have. It was my way. What an extraordinary man. And we're joined now by Captain Sir Tom's daughter, Hannah. Well, Hannah, good morning to you. It feels so strange uh, to be interviewing you on your own mm. without your dad. The very first time we talked to you, last April, it seemed it was only nine months ago, you believe that? Um, there you both were, and you were always by his side for all the interviews that we did. So first of all, on behalf of everybody here, our deepest condolences to you and your family on the loss of this extraordinary man and we feel we've lost mm. uh, a remarkable person this was your dad um how are you how are you dealing with life after your dad well good morning and and um thank you i think it is really difficult you know we have lost a, a fifth of our family and it's really hard to say it it makes me feel very emotional just to say it because he was a part of our life for over 13 years but what an extraordinary man. And, and firstly, I do want to say thank you to you, um, Piers and Susanna, and to everyone who's watching for the incredible support you gave the entire family over the last year. I mean, what a journey we've been on and, um, and what a beacon of hope and light he became to the world. So we miss him terribly, but we know that his legacy lives on. He had, he had this extraordinary life anyway mm. before the events of the last year. What's remarkable is that this time last year, we'd never heard of your dad. I didn't know who Captain Tom was. I found out when he tweeted me, or one of his grandchildren did on his behalf, and asked me, could I walk 100 laps in my garden? I didn't know what he was talking about. And then I found out what this was all about. And it really touched me, as it touched everybody in the country. Did you ever imagine, Hannah, when we first talked to you, that you'd end up with your dad not just raising nearly £40 million for the NHS, but also being knighted, having a number one pop record, being a GQ cover star, a man of the year, uh, winning a Pride of Britain award. I mean, he achieved more in nine months than most people do in their entire lifetime. What was it like for you as a family to go on this incredible roller coaster? Just um, almost indescribable we're just an ordinary family right just like everybody else and we just we sat here thinking look what can we do to help um fight the pandemic in those very early days raise a thousand pounds and and that was it there was nothing more to it we you know i think benji sent out and i collected an iMovie with 170 people saying please donate to captain tom walking for uh, the covid 19 appeal and um, I put a little press release out, honestly thinking we'd pick up local news, which would have been fine. And then uh, what happened is somehow that, that story, it piqued and interest and it touched people's hearts. And all we did as a family was hang on. Um, you know, we were no experts, we had no experience, but we, within 10 days, had 1.5 million emails and the world's press were at the gate. And all that we tried to do was lock together the five of us. Um, and, and try and do the best that we could. I think it was here on your program when we said, look, we don't even know what the number should be anymore. This is not up to us anymore. This is up to you, the British public. And, and so we handed the story and we gave it out because we, we felt that was the right thing to do. What an incredible journey. We never thought about, we never planned, we never imagined any of it. Yeah. 
It's, and he's had such a huge effect on everybody's lives. And we thank you, Hannah, for sharing him with us for that final nine months. And I think a lot of people will want to pay tribute, pay their respects to him. The funeral for your father takes place on Saturday. You, he was a remarkably open man, very positive, very optimistic. Um, he discussed, didn't he, his plans for his funeral with you. So you know what he would have wanted on Saturday. A lot of people will want to share that with you, but you're asking people to just pay their respects by not being there. This is a really difficult time, isn't it? And we, um, you, you saw, he was a really open man. We were really close and we, we talked about everything. And of course he was older, so the, the concept of talking about his death was a, a real one. But we had a, a lovely conversation, and uh, he and I, here in this kitchen, when I said to him, you know, I think the thought of a very uh, quiet funeral might not cut it anymore. People might be quite interested. And he, you know, he said in his Yorkshire accent, do you think so? And, um, and I said, I do, and we should think about what it is you want. And his wishes were really clear. He, he said he would like to be cremated and he would like his ashes to be taken up to the family grave in Yorkshire. And he was um, also very um, prescriptive about the songs that he wanted to be played and the fact he wanted us to eat Victoria sponge cake and sandwiches afterwards. And he was very pleased that he wouldn't be having to make them. <laughs> and is it true that on his tombstone he wants it to say, told you I was old? <laughs> it really is. Um, and he, he, you know, he, he had a, a sense of humour. That humour runs in the family. It was his uncle, Arthur, who was on the stage um, and was hilariously funny. And, and, you know, funny bones, right? He, mm. he said he just wanted people to look and, and, and not to be sad, give them a bit of joy. And, and he, he told us he was old. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... We'll all miss your dad in so many different ways. I'll just miss the fact we, we used to have these hilarious chats on the phone where he was very, very funny um, and mischievous and always that twinkle in his eye. Um, what will you miss most mm. about your dad? Oh, um, what is there not to miss? You know, we... It's really hard to describe to you. You know, I open the cupboards and um, his things are in it and I'm doing the shopping and I'm not putting his things on it. And we'll miss the noise, the, the, we're missing a fifth. Like he would be outside and obviously not latterly, but before he'd be out with the dogs up in his shed, he would be out in his car and he was just one whole solid big fifth of our family. And there's, we miss everything, the noise, and now it's just the silence. And even the dog, Hooch, he's plodding around. And we've got two dogs, but the big one is pacing. We all feel incredible loss, but we feel like we don't own that grief, that that grief is everybody's grief. Many people have lost someone. And we want people to know that we know that they're grieving with us. And this is not our personal loss. But of course, on, from a family perspective, it's really, really hard. But we know he was so proud of the legacy that he left behind. And um, so we're really proud of that. And that's our hope for the future, isn't it? What, what do you think, Hannah, he would like his legacy to be? Well, I mean, he was really clear what that was. You know, in those early days, um, I think when we hit 12 million pounds in two weeks, we sat as a family and said, you know, what, what can we do? We've been given this incredible opportunity. And, and it was then we discussed setting up the Captain Tom Foundation. And he was just, um, I just can't tell you how thrilled, how, how proud he was to feel that his legacy could give hope to other people, um, to inspire hope where it was needed most. And, and he really believed it. You know, those conversations we were having right to the end, he said he would be back out and, and he would be fundraising. And I don't think he could quite believe that one person um, could have had so much impact, but he was so happy that if just his voice could help support other people, he could, you know, really rest easily. You know, Hannah, he was a great man, an exceptional human being, mm. regardless of the walk. I think if I'd met your dad, you know, when he was 98, I'd have felt the same way about it. There was something about him that was really quite magical. And the way he spoke to this country through its most difficult period, really, since the Second World War, where he had served so valiantly himself 
all those years before. Mm. You know, he rallied the country in a kind of Churchillian way, which was just what we all needed. And we're all going to miss him terribly. I want to wish you all the very best, you and your family, for Saturday for the funeral. And hopefully down the line, when this is all over, we can have a, a massive memorial to the great Captain Sir Tom. Thank you. I think that would be amazing. And we'd love to come back to you and tell you what things will be happening in the future. Thank you very much. We'd love Thank to see you. Thank you, Hannah. Th thanks so much, Hannah. We appreciate you joining us.